Hey everyone, it's Mace1370. We are here for an RTA climb video. Before we get into it though, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, see the video description below for a link to my Discord. So I think now that we are, you know, status post balance patch for a week or two now, we have fully solidified the meta. Um, I'm still pre-banning Bellion and I'm kind of alternating between AOL and Sageball, just to see if I like the Sageball ban better. I think they both have their merits. So you may see me bounce between those right now, you know, or in these matches. Uh, let's see, I think Spectre first pick is still really strong if Bellion is out of the game. If they pre-ban Lua and Zeo, then I think Conqueror goes up a lot. But Seni is so flexible as the first pick. Um, it can be difficult to respond to her. This person takes Lua and Apoc Ravi. I take FCC and Destina. I think FCC I actually like a lot into Lua for a few reasons. The barriers can be a liability against units like DJ Bissar or Ning Ning, but Lua has to strip those if she wants to use her skill 3, so it's harder for them to take advantage of, you know, those barrier inversion mechanics when they have Lua. Also, the barriers usually will protect immunity and prevent your units from getting reset, because uh, Lua just removes one buff with her skill 3. So anyways, this uh, person has taken Strays and Zahawk, um, so I think we can take Sage Ball here. That's definitely a good pick. And I think there's a few options I could take next. Uh, the tricky thing is, you know, we have this A-Ravi anchor we have to be able to answer. And that could be a little hard with just a Spectre. So if he, if he pre-bans Spectre, then Apoc might solo me. Uh, we do have FCC and Destine. It might be hard for him to do that. Um, if we can keep reviving, you know, whatever other DPS we pick here, if he bans Spectre. So I think I miss pick here. I think, you know, in hindsight looking at this, I think Acid would have been fine. Could have taken Acid and, um, you know, that would have easily killed the Zahawk or the Strays. Um, I take A Marrow because I wanted another DPS that could, uh, you know, fight the A-Ravi, right? And she doesn't care about getting reset. So I think that's a possibility. Another, you know, I could have just taken... Um, something that could interrupt him, I guess, like maybe Solitaria or something that might be a little dicey. Um, I think I also miss Ban here. Um, ban out the Mercedes. I was thinking, oh, it's a major could have book, but everybody runs the Mercedes artifact on it, so I don't think I need to worry about that. Um, I think we honestly just ban the Strays here. Uh, because, you know, Mercedes can go and use her skill 3 and maybe kill Steny or something, but, um, you know, we have Destina. So I think this was a mispick on my part. Um, but going into this, I, I still thought I was okay, you know, because I'm thinking, okay, he can, he's not going to be able to reset my Destina. So even if he kills FCC with strays, I can just bring everyone back and I should be able to stabilize. So that was kind of, you know, the thought process with these picks. Okay, he gets the sleep on FCC which means he'll be able to reset her. Uh, that's not the end of the world. And now Zahawk is going to be able to give Stray's attack buff. And he goes into FCC, and this is the interaction that I was not really aware of. So this lowers... You know, she gets uh, quite a bit of injury, and this lowers her max HP enough so that Strays kills Destina. <laughs> Which is really awkward. Because I was thinking, oh, FCC will just die. But the injury is so crippling. And it, it's enough to lower FCC's max HP below Destina's. Uh, which is pretty tragic. Uh, so I don't think there's any way I can survive this. Yes, if we stun Apoc, maybe we have a shot, and then Arc Demon goes sicko mode. Uh, but it's also a Crimson Seed Apoc, which means I probably could have killed it with any number of things. Yeah. I desire your flesh. Regrets. So now I don't see what we can do to get out of this. I think I guess we have to go on Apoc. We get the seal. It'll probably get cleansed. It does. And now hopefully we just blind everyone and Archimon solos them. I've seen it happen before. 
Um, I guess the hawk, yeah, the hawk can still miss with blind because his hit chance is only on the skill three. Uh, but we get death broke in there, so we're dead. Okay, next game. This guy first picks Conquer Lilius. And Lua is pre banned, so we can't take Lua. Uh, normally I would go Steny Lua here, but because Lua is pre banned, we can take Laika instead. Uh, I think you could potentially take Zeo here, but I, I really don't like taking Zeo early. I, I like to try to take him a bit later if possible, just because it gives the opponent to, um, to kind of trap you a bit. Like, they don't always have to do the, quote, stealth draft. You'll see me do that a couple times in this game, you know, this series of games. Um, but just Zeo doesn't do a lot after the first turn. Um, so he's a little tricky to take early. Um, let's see, the opponent takes Rimuru and Venture Ross. So he has no cleansers yet. Um, if we take... If we take Zeo now, I think that's okay. Um, you know, because if you take Zeo early, they can respond with, like, DJB or Hand Guy or other, you know, cleansers that kind of undo the fact that you just silenced the Lilius. Um, yeah, I think I think Zeo's okay here. Because this is a fairly aggressive draft with the Rimuru. Um, and I'm assuming this is, like, a fast Adventure Ross. Like, some people are doing, like, a 250 speed one to kind of, you know, use him as, like, a defense breaker and like an aggro setup um, i've seen that a lot so i'm gonna take zeo and sage ball um i think sage is nice here because he bans out the zeo sage can interrupt the momentum right that he's trying to accomplish um and i think i, I want to do that because you know conquer into you know a strip into uh an aras s2 defense break into like a rimmer thing like things could die pretty quick right in the beginning so we need to interrupt that momentum Hi. Uh, he takes Karina, that's interesting. And Designer Lilibet. Okay, so I think we have to ban the Designer here, because otherwise our Sage is useless. Uh, and it also makes our Leica hard to use as well. Yeah, so the Designer Lilibet is going to have to go. Um, let's see, let's see. Yeah, I guess we can take Dark Corvus and see how it goes. <laughs> um, I don't know if DC is a great pick here. Uh, he probably has enough effect resistance to uh, resist uh, some defense breaks. And I just kind of wanted a big meat shield, though. He banned it. Okay. Yeah, I think I think Rimuru and Karina might have a hard time working Dark Corvus down, is the thought process there. Right, if they can't defense break him, um, and he doesn't know what build I'm on. So he bans out the Dark Corvus. Um, so we have Zeo and we have Sage Ball as kind of like little meat shields in front of our Steny here and Laika. So this will be an interesting match. Okay, we want to silence the Lilius, I think, because I don't want my Spectre getting attacked down. Um, Karina, or Karina, uh, AE Karina does have, I think, some merit. Um, in certain drafts, she has, you know, this mechanic where she will, you know, CR boost herself up and shield the team and give herself defense buff if somebody goes, you know, below an HP threshold. And I think it's like 50% or something. So I think she works well in scenarios where there's like two high priority kill targets between her and somebody else. So like her and Dilibet work really well because you kind of want to like take out the Dilibet. Uh, but if you do that, you're going to activate the, you know, the Karina. Um, so those are the types of, you know, snares where I think she's good. Um, here we can just sleep his team. Which I think is worth doing. Uh, Karina does not have any cleanses, right? Okay, so there goes Zeo. But he's used his Rimmer S3 now, and that should... Um, that should mean he's out of gas for the moment. I'll take your life. This is it. Because we can Soul Burn and we can get rid of this Rimuru here with Spectre. With me. And that, or I mean, I'm sorry, the Conqueror. And that will uh, activate the 
Karina, so I think that doesn't that waste her activation? It might put her on cooldown. Yeah, we definitely kill this Conqueror. We do not want him to get a bigger buff. Okay, so let's see. Who is our next kill target? It's probably going to be Adventure Ras. Rimuru has anti crit, which could complicate things, so that's kind of annoying. Uh, we don't want to hit Karina because it'll give her barrier from Aras, so we can just like a duel here into Aras and try to finish him off. Uh, Sage Ball is hanging on by a thread. So, do I want to skill 3 the Aras here? It might finish him off. This is going to be really close. This will be about 10k, right? This will be very close. Nope, not enough. You want to try me? Uh, but that's okay. This lets us finish off the Aras with Spectre, and then we can go into Karina again. And I guess we'll just keep hitting Karina. She will get to skill 3 here, I think. But she doesn't have defense break. Or, I mean, what I'm saying is she doesn't have defense buff. And Sage has way too much ER to get defense broken. Yeah. So that's not going to do much. Well, you know what? I should have... Um, that was dumb. I should have skill 2 there. That was a mistake. Because this gives Rimmer a free attack. We could have slept him. I oh, know. I guess Spectre goes first anyways. Okay, yeah, we win. Sweet. We're finally finished. Shall we go eat something delicious? Alrighty, first pick again, so you know what that means. It is Spectre Tenebria time. Uh, I pre-banned Sage this time, and he happened to pre-ban AOL, so that worked out perfectly for me. I think I've seen this player on the ladder before. I don't know if he's the the Fire Charlotte player who used to have like a really fast cleave team that was really hard to beat. I can't remember. There was some player with a Charlotte profile that, that cleaved a lot a few seasons ago. Uh, okay, interesting. So he's taking Laika and Landy. Um, well, Lua is not the greatest into Landy, that's for sure. She's okay into Laika. If you can reset the Laika, then, you know, you don't get, uh, slept or anything like that. So I could take the Lua here just to get, you know, speed priority. Um, yeah, so we'll take Lua and now I can take... I think I need to take another stealth unit. I don't want to take Zeo here. I was debating about Conqueror Lilius, but I don't know if my Conqueror is fast enough yeah. to race. Uh, we'll take Bryceria and see how it works. Okay, he okay. takes the Conqueror. If you wish to live. And then he takes Zeo. So I guess that was to deny me the Zeo pick. But we can trap him now because we have three stealth units. So we can we can take um I guess Aiden would be okay. We could take uh General Purgus. And Holiday Euphine would be the last one. I kinda wanna try Holiday Euphine. Although I do need to rebuild her. Uh or not rebuild her, but I need to change her artifact. She's on guide to a decision. Um and after this match I do swap her over to Snow Crystal. But I think Snow Crystal is, is her new best in slot artifact. Um and you'll see why. So this is I guess a good example of why Snow Crystal is better. Okay, then he takes Ran. Uh, Ran's a little spooky. I think we need to ban the Ran. Yeah, because he could potentially RNL into a, a disaster. <laughs> uh, okay, so he bans General Purgus, so we have Holiday Euphine. So the way Guide to a Decision works, it gives your hero the barrier at the start of the turn, and if you're hit, and you're still at 100% after being hit, then you get a CR boost. Um, so the wording is a little weird. Um, and in addition to that, Zeo's S3 deals damage proportional to your health, and Guide to a Decision gives you a barrier proportional to your health. And the way those proportions are set, Zeo will always 
break the barrier, I think, I even on a miss. Um, he looks like he hits here, actually, though. Uh, so that's a bummer. I've been told on a miss it also breaks the barrier, uh, but I kind of wanted to test it. I guess I didn't get to see the result. Okay, so we sleep the Conquer Lilius. Um, I don't think you always need to sleep with Lua right before you use her skill 3. So you don't need to skill 2 into skill 3. I do it here because I just don't want the Conqueror to drag anybody and attack. And, um, that would be a disaster, right? If he like pulled up Landy or something, or um, did enough damage to like kill Holiday Yuffie or something like that. Uh, he gets a dual attack anyways, so I guess it's fine. Alright, he's going to Soulburn Landy. But I think the Landy... Okay, our Stenny survives just barely. That's really important. Goes on the Lua there. Uh, so now we can rip our skill 3 with Viseria and Reverse Cleave. Won't you regret this? Oh, and now we even get to Holiday Euphine. Wow. Wombo combo. Alrighty, that's game. Oh, I'm telling you. Alrighty, so this is a very annoying situation to be put in. Uh, your second pick, the openers are banned out, and opponent takes Spectre Tenebria first. Um, I think when Conqueror is banned out, I think you can take Hand Guy early. So that seems fine. And I guess we'll take Aras. Um, and we'll try to play standard here. Okay, he's taking Arrowell. And made Chloe. Alright, so... I think... Um, you know what, honestly, I think I screwed up here. So, you know, make Chloe, you think, oh, okay, we can take uh, Landy, right? And then, I guess, just take Milam so that he can't, um, he can't take the Milam. This is okay, but I think a better line might have been to take, uh, like, Bryceria and Strays or something like that. Uh, Bryceria would really threaten um, the maid Chloe. Alright, so we'll see what the last two picks are. Yeah, if you take Braceria here, I guess you need to end the game pretty quick. Um, so let's see, what could have been my options? If I, if I took Braceria, I could have also taken... Like Sage Vivian, maybe? That could have been okay. And then he takes Arc Demon into Solitaria. Yeah, in hindsight, I think I definitely screwed this up. I should. So I think I was like, okay, Solitaria, I can take Dark Corvus. Um, and then we can ban out his Arc Demon. But we have Aras. So I think in hindsight, like it might have been better to ban out the Solitaria and just take something else instead. Um, yeah, he, because now he bans Hand Guy, and we're in a little bit of a pickle, because we don't have Cleanse, right, for this Solitaria. Uh, my land is also not on immunity right now, so maybe I should change that. What could go wrong, right? Right, he stuns the Millum, so she's never taking a turn. Uh, and then he stuns my entire team, with the exception of Dark Corvus. So that's cool. Uh, 
Uh, luckily, Landy, I think, is taking a turn here. He skill threes, and I think he honestly might have been able to uh, just S1 the Landy, and that would have boosted up Spectre and uh, Arrowell, so he might have been able to finish the Landy off, potentially. Uh, but now he can't reach Landy for, you know, another cycle, right? Solitaria has to go to knock her out. And he is skill 3 so I have I have souls for Soulburn, and uh, he has enough buffs that Landy could double S3, which I think would be, like, really bad. Let's see, does this push everybody back? Uh, it does. Yikes. So I guess Solitary is going to go first. Uh, Dark Corvus can poke Arrowell. Very effective. Alright, uh, decrease speed on Aras. That's not good because he's kind of far back. Uh, and then he stuns Landy again. So, you know. Sometimes you get solitary, I guess. I protect. That's what I do. Okay, if Landy can live here, she does, so she lives. Uh, I don't think Solitaria will kill the Landy, so now she might get a turn, because I think she's naturally faster than Arrowell is. Even though they're both back on the CR bar, I think Landy's faster than his team, with the exception of Solitaria. Uh, decrease speed, so now she probably won't lap. Uh, and he stuns her a third time, so... He also stuns Aras. So now at this point, the only way we can win is with a Dark Corvus solo. Okay, Landy's dead. We kind of want Aras to just die at this point. So the Dark Corvus can start getting hit. Okay, I didn't check Dark Corvus's cooldown. Is looks like yeah, I think he is on his S3 now. So the question is, who do we kill here first? And I think the answer is the Maid, because Maid can give attack buff potentially. Yeah, so I think we kill Maid first. Uh, because I think his the way he wins here is if he's able to do enough damage to Dark Corvus within a certain cycle, right, before I can get a turn in skill 3 to heal back up. Um, and I think attack buff would definitely let him do that. I protect. That's what I do. Weight of the oath I've taken. Will be brought down upon you. Our Dark Corvus is slowed, but I'm on Durandal, so he should start pushing up here, yeah. I have two turns, so this will for sure enable a uh, S3, uh, but we're blinded and attack down, so I don't know if we kill. But I think we need to do this to heal up, because I don't... Steny has Soulburn, we're not going to live another cycle if we don't uh, heal here. Barely. I think if we didn't, we missed there too, I think. If we didn't get one of those debuffs, or if we hit, I think Arrowell would have died. Um, it might actually be better for us that she didn't. No, no, I don't think it is. Because, you know, if we get to another S3, we'd be able to take out Spectre, right? And then it would just be game. I think we got a little unlucky here. Yeah, because now we have to go into Arrowell again. We even have S3, we do. Okay, so we can now we can kill Arrowell. Yeah, see right here, if Arrowell had died, we would just kill Spectre and then this would have been a win. That's a little frustrating. Uh, so he, he can push Dark Corvus back. That's probably not good. Okay. You aren't even fit to kiss my feet. Is that all you've got? At 
Oh, we live. Oh, but we're one turn off. Uh, that's tragic. I guess we hit Spectre and Provoke. Heal a teeny bit? Man. Yeah, because I think this probably kills. Uh, maybe if he doesn't crit, I live, and I get pushed up a lot. No crit, and... Oh, no, he crits. Hmm, unfortunate. Hey, we get to fight Charlotte guy again this time. He gets first pick. So if I had to guess, he's going to take Spectre to Nebria. And he does. So now we get to play into a pick one Spectre. So I'm still experimenting with the ways I, I want to respond to this. You know, given these pre-bands of like AOL gone, Bellion gone, sometimes Sage Ball gone. Um, so one opening I thought about was Lua FCC. Yeah, because the annoying thing is if you pick Lua, then they can take FCC later, and it can be hard to control them. Um, another opening I thought about was, like, Lua Aiden. Also, I don't know, it seems okay. Aiden's, like, kind of a safe-ish DPS pick early. Um, I don't love it, though, because Spectre can, you know, nullify her counterattack, right? So that seems a little bad. So we're going to try the FCC play here. He takes DJ Bassar. You know, so my thought is, you know, FCC's weak against units that barrier invert, but if you take Lua, then you can reset them, and then they don't invert the barrier, get started? potentially. Uh, then he takes Adventure Rass. Okay. So I think, uh, let's see, this seems like a fairly standard opening from him, which means I think we can go aggressive. I kind of want to try that Zahawk Strays combo. Seems fun. But it may not work with DJB because he is a pretty low hit point, right? Typically. I don't, the injury is probably not enough to lower Adventurer Ross chaos. down. But let's give it a shot. So we can take Strays and then we'll take Zahawk. Um, you know, in hindsight, looking at this though, it, it's really hard to do this in pick two because they can go double speed in their last two. I guess we have Lua to defend against that a little bit. Like, he could take Zeo and, I don't know, some other fast thing here. Uh, he takes Acid. And Green Sid. Hmm, so I don't know how fast this DJB is. Uh, I could ban out the imprint. The green sit is a little spooky if he doesn't, um, if he bans my Lua. Because if he bans my Lua, then green sit could, I can still would likely take the first turn if it's a fast green sit, or DJB would, right? Because my other units are not that fast. And then green sit could potentially kill both Strays and Zahawk. Uh, if we ban out green sit, he can kill one, which is annoying. But that might be not as bad for me. Also, given the DJB speed, if he gets that imprint from Green Sid, might push the DJB above my Zahawk in speed, and that would be bad. My Zahawk is like 285, I think. So I think we ban out the Green Sid and just try to speed race it with the Lua. <clears throat> uh, he wins, looks like just barely. I should check the CR bar here. So he can kill Strays or he can kill Zahawk. Who's he killing? He's killing Strays. I I will win. Ouch. Okay. It looks like somebody forgot their place. Um, also, this is a Turnus oh, DJB. That's a big problem. Thing. Suffer an eternity of pain. It is not a Turnus. All right, so we can we can attack buff Briar Witch. That's nice. And let's see, an attacked buff Briar Witch will kill an Assassin Sid for sure. That's not an issue. Um, hopefully it kills the Spectre Tenebria. That would be nice. But I think we need to go into Adventure Ross here to, you know, try and 
kill him, you know, plus the uh, the Briar Witch. Uh, I have Simba on my Zahawk, so he's, you know, unlikely to miss the Aras. Alright, we get to skill 3 here. Bammo. That is a dead adventure, Ross. Uh, Spectre hangs on by a thread, unfortunately. Um, but, good news is, we have Zahawk here with invincibility. And he splashes into Lua, because he was reset. So he can kill Lua now, and then he can push back my team. Uh, but D and has DJB used his... I guess it doesn't matter if DJB blinds me, because... I have Symbol on Zahawk. I mean, it's not great, but I have Symbol on Zahawk to mitigate that, and Briar Witch doesn't care about it. Okay, yeah, he's Water's Origin. Um, Alright, so this almost certainly kills, but we'll Soul Burn just to make sure. Yep. And this should be game, because his Spectre is essentially dead, um, and Briar Witch still has Immortality. Yeah. So Briar Witch can just kill the Spectre. Nice. Okay, so we're playing into first pick Spectre Tenebria again. Uh, I guess, I mean, we'll try this again just to see how it feels. You really want your blood spill? With our Lua Fallen Cecilia response. Just follow my lead. Um, another, you know, I was talking to some of my guildmates. Uh, some people recommended like Leica plus Aiden could be okay, so I might try that. Let's see, he takes Desert Jewel Basar and then. Yolha. One thing I don't like about this is a lot of people have like 200 ER on their DJB, so it's kind of like a coin flip if my Lua resets them or not. So I don't love that. Uh, we'll take Zahawk and Strays here. The other thing is, yeah, I feel like I feel like a lot can go wrong when you're in this spot, because, they, they, again, they could take double speed here. Um, you know, you don't reset the DJB. Uh, DJB is probably not going to outspeed Zahawk, but could happen. So, yeah, he takes Zeo, so that's a must ban. And it looks like he's thinking about Ed. You know, the other thing I don't like about this is I don't have a mage to Soulburn Lua. And then he takes Briar Witch Iceria. Okay, so we have to ban out uh, the Zeo. And Briar's not the end of the world because we'll reset her with Lua. I need to figure out a, something I can take here to get a must ban. Oh, I could also take Sez. <laughs> That's right. I was fishing for Sez games. Oh, what a troll pick. I uh, should not have taken Sez there. Let's see. What could have been okay? Um, Ed's not amazing. Let's see. Is Roy okay? No, I don't have enough dual attacks for Roy. Better take in some sort of, uh, maybe Holiday Euphine, potentially? No. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, but says is absolutely not good. Uh, but, okay, so in my defense, when I was looking at this, I was thinking that the Briar Witch would be slow. And that my says would naturally take a turn. Or, yeah, I could have maybe killed, um, I could have killed DJB, potentially.
Alright, well, I was also hoping to kill Stenny. I guess that didn't happen. Maybe I need to up the damage on my strays more. Yeah, I think I do. But see, if I kill Stenny, I just, I pretty much just win here. So you know what? I think looking at this, if I want to do this type of thing, I need to up my strays damage, right? Because we failed to kill Stenny twice now. Um, and I don't think Strays needs to be as fast as he is. I'm at my limit. Says is the uh, the real all star here though, right? Everything. Oh wait, oh no, Stenny's gonna, Stenny's gonna get him. Kiss my feet. I will step on you. Okay, rip. Also, did I not trigger uh, Briar Witch either? Yeah, we definitely need to upstray his damage, for sure. Oh no, we did. We did trigger Briar Witch. Okay, alright. Uh, I think we win then, because we can Soul and kill DJB there. And now we can kill Spectre. Okay, nice. This is the path on which I belong. Alright, so let's see, Stenny is banned out, uh, Ball is banned out, and AOL and Bellion. Uh, the Stenny pre-ban is kind of annoying. I take Lua first here. Wasn't really sure what he was doing with a Stenny AOL pre-ban, but I feel like, you know, Lua's a good hero, so we can take Lua. Uh, he's gonna take Zeo and Hand Guy. So, this is, uh, this is the trap that a lot of people are doing against... Zeo early pickers, and I think it's really hard to early pick Zeo. I think you have to have some insane tech to go alongside him for it to work. Uh, because now we can take Aiden and we can take another Guiding Light unit like Flitica. And it doesn't really matter so much what he takes next. I mean, it does matter, but um, there's nothing he can do to prevent his Zeo not taking the first turn right. Um, so Zeo's going to hit into... Aiden or something like that. So I was actually brainstorming uh, like what I would want to do if I was the Zeo player. And I think that I think there's a couple options. I think you can take like Rowana and Lionheart Sermia potentially. And then you're hitting into the Aiden to get the counter. And then that CR boosts your team. Um, and then Lionheart Sermia activates and stuff. So I think that's one option. Um, you can try that. And then another thing I was thinking about is, what if you were an Omega Whale and you pulled two Zeos, and then you intentionally built one Zeo slow, right? Omega Brain. And then you draft it with another opener like C. Lilius, so then your C. Lilius goes first, uh, takes away stealth from everything, and then Zeo can hit into something else. Uh, so something to think about. Uh, anyways, we can take General Purgus here, so... And then our last thing has to be stealth, uh, so we'll just take Briar Witch Iseria. Uh, this way, his Zeo is going to either CR boost my team by going into G Perg or goes into Aiden. Um, either way, I get a CR boost, and uh, it's bad news for him. I mean, he takes Milim, I think, to like de stealth my units, but I think Milim's just going to die. If he bans the Aiden, then my Briar Witch should kill her. And if he bans the General Purgus, then Aiden gets boosted and I kill her. Um, I think we just ban Apoc. I think we have enough control for Karina. We can reset her with Lua and Flitica. Like, we want to reset Hangai with Flitica for the Briar Witch debuffs to stick, but, you know, Lua's going to reset her one turn, so I think we should have plenty of time to deal with her. Uh, we can hold the skill 2 on Flitica and strip defense buff after she procs her thing, and that, that should really reduce her damage. Witness the power of the chosen one. So, I mean, in principle, Karina works okay here because we have a priority kill target. Like, we need to kill Milan on our side, right? So that's going to proc the Karina, but the problem he has is that, you know, we have all these skill resets, right? So even if she procs, she's not going to do anything. Um, I, I slept this in hindsight. I don't think I need to. I, I should have just saved that. Because she's going to get woken up no by uh, Briseria, right? Since there's no getting away from it, make peace and accept your fate. Stay out. 
Alright, so we'll hold this so we can strip later. We'll reset and guy so he doesn't get rid of all of these tasty debuffs. And here comes Briar Witch. So I guess our lose condition at this point is not landing defense breaks and his stuff surviving. So yeah, there's the there's the Karina. But we landed defense break on Melon. I think that's someone who we really had to kill. Uh, we didn't get it on Zeo, but I don't think that matters. Okay, he goes into General Purgus. Uh, we're silenced, which stinks. I guess we can't skill three, but this should kill off the Melon, and it does. Didn't even, didn't even need the dual attack. Um, his hand guy is reset, so he has to skill one into General Purgus, giving us even more CR. It's like the Golden Boys never left. It looks like somebody forgot their place. Uh, went for a defense break there on Zia, didn't get it. Uh, now we can skill two on Flitica to get rid of that defense buff, because Karina has her skill three now. Uh, I think we attack Karina so that we blind her potentially. I think that's the play. I don't. We may not have enough damage to kill Hand Guy. Uh, she resisted. That's unlucky. Uh, but we can skill three with General Purgus here, so that should kill something. Okay, nice. Kills the Zio, and Hand Guy's stunned. And now we just go for the defense break on Karina. Uh, we don't get it. Probably would have gotten resisted. Anyways. I'll be the one deciding how this story ends. Go for the defense break again. Nope. Alright, well, I guess she's going to skill 3 without defense buff. Defense break would have been nice because that would have really needed the damage. Um, yeah, that did not enough, so I think we're fine. With defense buff, that could have been scary, but I think we would have been okay. Alright, see you next time.